sacrament of meeting by way of these two angels, they will indeed help you to get closer to me. But if you are thinking that you on your own know the way how to get to me, forget about it. There is no way how to do that because if you don't know who I am, you can neither know how to serve me. So who is the only one who can tell you how to serve me? That is me. And therefore I have to give the tzivui and at that moment some kind of halachic condition walks in because it is only that way then that you are able to serve him. Then the question comes back to Avram Avinu obviously is, so what did Avram Avinu do when he did not have this halachic condition? What is it that happened with him, which is at this hour not exactly clear to me how that would work? Yes, I will come back to that because this is exactly one of the points I'm going to make. Very good, very good. Another possibility would be this, and for those who have been here last week and have heard some of my lectures the year before, um, there may be another possibility, and that God says, okay, you know, I won't demand from you how to serve me, but I definitely will give you some suggestions. The suggestions are suggested by me. And you are able to choose between these suggestions, different possibilities, how to serve me. It is not a one-way road. It is not orthodoxy, as the official word goes. But it is another opportunity where many difficult, different situations, a diversity of options are still permitted. And for reasons which we have to discuss later on, they were then after a time somehow pushed aside and they are no longer part of the system, but perhaps they were once part of the system. Here were what I say, the issue of diversity, the issue of making a choice between different possibilities, which God has brought to the attention of man, and man can now make a choice which one of these are the ones which work the best for him <coughs> to serve God in the proper way. Which in the halachic world, in the development of the halachic world, later on seems to have been rejected. I say seems to have rejected. We have to see more about it. But now I want to bring in something else. It is actually based on an observation which was made by Eliezer Berkowitz. I mentioned him before. Professor Rabbi, Professor Eliezer Berkowitz, a very original thinker within the orthodox world, who no doubt has been very much struggling with all these issues. Berkowitz says something very interesting, which by the way has been heavily criticized by Tamar Ross in her book uh, called the um, uh, Expanding the Palace of the Torah, which by the way is a must when it comes to understanding what's going on today in Jewish philosophy. Uh, but a very difficult book to read. I had to read it several times before I fully understood what Professor Tamar Ross was trying to get to. But there, there is a critique on what I'm going to say now, but I shall not go into this. Uh, Robert Berkowitz, or Professor Berkowitz, uh, says something like this. He says, you have to understand the following. The Torah is not the ideal way of living. But that has nothing to do with the question that it is the word of God. For him it is the word of God as much as it is for you and for me the word of God. But it is still not the ideal. Why is it not the ideal? And by the way, this comes up in Rav Kook, his, uh, somewhere of his Ma'amarim as well, in some of his essays as well. The idea is, he says, that there are two kind of mitzvot to be found in the Torah. One he calls Torah taught, and the other one he calls Torah tolerated. Torah tolerated. What does he mean by that? What he means by that is that there are indeed values in the Torah which are reflected in the mitzvot, which are absolute, but there are also mitzvot in the Torah where the Torah says you should do this or you should do that, and the implication there is for the mean time. Not that there is a denial that God did not give these commandments, but they are given to the in the meantime, for the meantime, they are tolerated by the Torah. Why are they tolerated by the Torah? 
because at that time when the Torah was given, there was a necessity for them. But that doesn't mean to say that that necessity will continue forever. For example, you all know that, the famous case is the case where Maimonides brings his observations about the korbanot, about the sacrifices, where he says the sacrifices were basically a non-Jewish institution, which then the Torah, that means HaKadosh Baruch Hu himself, included into the Torah world at the time, because man was still in the need of bringing korbanot, which up till now they were given to the idols, and now God says, you know what, I can't get you out of that overnight, it is too much for you to stop serving some kind of God without the need to bring korbanot, so I will permit you now to bring these korbanot to me. You can't bring them anymore to the idols, but you can definitely continue to bring to me, and I will tell you how to do that, and as we all know, there are a tremendous amount of halachot and mitzvot about how to do that. Probably the reason is because bringing korbanot is an extremely dangerous thing. It is dangerous in the sense that it very quickly can lead to Abu Dazara, to idol worship. And therefore you need on all sides restrictions how to do that and to make sure that it can no longer be identified with the kind of korban, the kind of sacrifice which was bred in the days of the idols. But, on the end of the day, God adopts a non-Jewish ID, sacrifices, includes them in the Torah, and says to the Jewish people, for the meantime, you are going to serve me this way as well, with the hope, and that's the reading, no doubt, of my money, that is, that one day you will outgrow this mitzvah, and there will no longer be a need for you to do so, and actually then we are on a higher level than we are when we are still giving these particular korbanot. Now this is an obviously a very, very, let's say, uh, far-reaching statement and in many ways highly controversial and therefore Ramban and others strongly object against that this is the right approach to the Korbanot. They say the Korbanot has caused nothing to do with the non-Jewish world. It is a real Jewish institution, but Maimonides in the Morin Abuchim definitely is not of that opinion. Other example is the Eved Ifri, the Hebrew slave. We allow slavery in the Torah. Why do we allow slavery in the Torah? Because at the time you could not yet manage to run a state or a society without the concept of slavery. Because the whole world was involved in that. So what needs to be done, says Maimonides, or Maimonides doesn't really say that, that Berkowitz is arguing for that. What needs to be done is, okay, what you have to do is at least give slavery a more of a moral base to work from, than the slavery, as was the case in the non-Jewish world, where slaves were terribly, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, being uh, or not being looked after and being used in ways which are absolutely in inhuman. Torah didn't want this to allow it anymore. It says, okay, I will allow you for the slavery to, com to continue. You can have a six-year slave, for example, but there are many conditions how you have to treat that slave. These are examples, says Ber uh, Berkowitz, of what we call, what he calls, Torah tolerated. Now, by doing that, Berkowitz throws in a whole new perspective on some of the mitzvot, because he says, tolerated means to say, for the meantime, they are fine, they are of great help, they are given by God, God implements them, God requires them from that, but ultimately, we have to outgrow them. And therefore, and there are some other commentators who make that point, by the way, we have several mitzvot which today we do no longer have anymore, such as Korbanot, such as the Eved Ivri, and then we should not want it ever to return back and become part again of the Jewish tradition. There are several philosophers today who are, orthodox philosophers in today, who are making that point. Others will strongly object and say, no, 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 one day we will have the Korbanot back. There are even opinions which say one day we will have the Eved Ivri back, we will have the Hebrew slave back. But if you take the stand of Berkowitz, then it means to say, Baruch Hashem, we outgrew, out, outgrew them by now, and there is no way how we are ever going to bring them back, because what the Torah wants is something else. It doesn't want to have a Torah society as we would find 